We got a whole crew. Good afternoon, and thank you all for joining us. It's great to stand up here with some of the most influential and amazing women from across our state. We are all here to say, frankly, that we've had enough. Enough trying to erase women and girls, enough denying our biological differences from men, and enough of the craziness that is taking over our country. I've had the honor of being both the first woman and the first mother to serve as the governor of Arkansas. Before that, I was the first mother and the only the third woman to serve as the White House press secretary. Because of that, I came into this role with a few pretty unique experiences. Among them is giving birth to three amazing kids. That experience underscored to me that a woman's perspective is important and fundamentally different from a man's. Nowadays, though, only conservatives seem to be making that point. On the left, women have taken a back seat to political correctness. It's why Senator Irving and Representative Barker had to pass the Fairness in Women's Sports Act to defend our girls across the state. They're using nonsense words to erase women and girls, and more importantly, to erase our voices and our experiences. Today, we're taking a stand against woke nonsense. What frankly started as a fad among a few grad students has seeped down into corporations, the healthcare industry, and increasingly, state government. It's demeaning to women, and it needs to stop. In a moment, I'll sign an executive order banning a number of all sorts of ridiculous words from state government documents. Those include words like pregnant people, laboring person, birth giver, and several other nonsense terms that have cropped up in recent years. Some on the left will accuse us of being nitpicky, that Arkansas should just lay down and accept the cultural revolution without complaint. I say it's the exact opposite. It's the left that decided that woman is a dirty word. It's the left that decided we needed to toss out basic biology and basic grammar along with it. I think they're just mad that conservatives are starting to fight back. And they better get ready because we're just getting started. Thank you for being here and thank you to the amazing women that are standing up here with me. I'll sign this executive order. We'll hear a few words from Dr. Chandler and I'll be happy to take a few questions. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Kay Chandler. I'm pleased to be Arkansas Surgeon General, and I'm a practicing obstetrician gynecologist here in Little Rock. I've been serving women of all ages since 1997, but the governor's executive order doesn't require a medical degree to understand. It's just common sense. As I was taught in medical school, and actually have known since I was five years old when I happened to be looking through my mother's nursing school textbooks and ran into some embryology textbooks, women give birth. Today, that has somehow become controversial, but it shouldn't be. Governor Sanders' executive order is smart on a number of counts. It stands up to those who try to erase women in the name of political correctness. In this administration, I know our governor won't let political correctness get in the way of science. Thank you. If there are any questions, I'll be happy to take a couple. Are there specific examples that there have been in state documents of being a term like pregnant, you know, pregnant people and being used? And is there, why now? What's the particular uh, urgency for, for doing this? Well, there's always an urgency to doing the right thing. Look, I, I wish that we didn't have to write and have executive orders like this, but because of the growing trend uh, that continues to seep into all areas of our life, we feel like it's important. We have seen specific instances that have happened in state government and been reported in other places in state government. And so at no time will I apologize for defending women and standing up for the differences between men and women. Does it matter if there's one? Is that not enough? How many times should a woman have to be insulted before we stand up and say, we've had it? 
Like, it shouldn't even take one time, uh, but one instance to me is enough for us to stand up for women and say that we can do better, and we will. I mean, I'm not keeping a running tally, but I have seen one specific instance, and we've had a, sep a number of other instances that have been reported to our office. What uh, Specifically at the health department. Are you in the currently in As I just said, we've seen uh, specific instances at the health department and several others that have been reported. It's, it's not that they're offensive, it's that they are scientifically wrong. And that's a different thing. There's something different about whether your feelings got hurt versus something that is just factually incorrect. You said they were insulting. I think it is insulting to women to define them as something other than what they are and to take away experiences that are so specific to them that cannot be uh, created just by saying uh, them into existence. Because there's a difference between what is right and what is wrong, what is factual and what is not. It's not just political correctness. It's literally the difference of what is accurate and what isn't. Which actually I think underscores the exact point. Because we have a federal government that is taking those kind of actions, it is imperative for states to step up and actually defend women. It's, you know, I feel like there's a question of why now? Because we have examples where the craziness is seeping into our state and our communities. This would be specific to state government documents that we have the ability to monitor through an executive order. I can't imagine why anybody would need to have incorrect information in a specific government form, but um, we could cross that bridge when we get there if needed. All right, thank you so much. I'm going to sign the executive order now.